Hi, this is Chef Skip. Now we're going to talk about Chapter 12, Knives and Smallwares. A great craftsman needs the proper equipment and never blames poor performance on his tools. Every operation has smallwares. Small hand tools and small equipment easy to use for food pre-preparation. These tools are designed to aid in cutting, shaping, moving, or combining food. Similar to knives, many hand tools are designed for specific tasks. Here is a bench scraper, a rigid small sheet of stainless steel with a metal blade used to scrape material off a work surface or, or bench, or to cut a portion of soft, semi-firm items like bread dough or cookie dough. A bowl scraper is a flexible piece of plastic or rubber used to combine ingredients in a bowl and then scrape them out. Again, to cut and separate dough and to also scrape dough and flour from wooden work tables. A channel knife. A knife used to cut grooves lengthwise in a vegetable such as a carrot. A peeler cuts a thick layer from the vegetables and fruits more efficiently than a paring knife. A grater, also known as a shredder, grates food into fine pieces. Examples include graters for hard cheeses, vegetables, and potatoes. You can also find microplanes to be used for the similar jobs. A zester shreds small pieces of the outer peel, often used for citrus fruits. There's not just one type of rolling pin. There are several types and you'll need to know these types for different jobs. A rolling pin or a baker's rolling pin is a cylinder used to roll over pastry to flatten or shape it. The rolling pin is simply a straight cylinder, also may be called a dowel. The classic rolling pin is a cylinder used to roll over pastry to flatten or shape it. This rolling pin has two handles attached to a center dowel that turns. A French rolling pin is a cylinder used to roll over pastry to flatten and shape it. This rolling pin is a single piece that tapers slightly on each end. A pizza cutter, also known as a pastry wheel, is used to cut pizza and roll out dough. A fish scaler removes scales from a fish. A core is used to remove the core of an apple or pear in one long round piece. A Parisian scoop is called a melon baller, cuts out shapes of soft fruits and vegetables into little balls. A commercial can opener is a large opener is mounted onto a metal utility table or a wooden utility table in order to be used to open large cans, number 10 cans primarily. A small handheld can opener like those for home use may be used in a restaurant or a food service kitchen to open small cans of food. Kitchen shears are strong scissors used to cut string, butcher's twine, and to cut grapes into little clusters. A pastry bag, a bag made of canvas, plastic, or nylon used to pipe out frostings, creams, and pureed foods. Different pastry tips create a variety of decorations. A pastry brush, used to brush egg wash, melted butter, glazes, and other liquids onto items such as baked goods, raw pasta, or meat. Piping tools include piping bags, canvas plastic or disposable, decorative tips, metal or plastic of varying shapes, and presses, cylinders with a handle on one end that force dough through a metal cutout. A china cap. A pierced metal cone shaped strainer used to strain soups, stocks, and other liquids to remove all solid ingredients. A very fine china cap made of metal mesh and called a chinois strains out very small solid ingredients. A colander allows liquid to drain while retaining solids such as cooked pasta and vegetables. Colanders stand on metal feet while strainers are usually handheld. A strainer is made of a mesh like material or metal with holes in it. Strainers come in different sizes and are often shaped like a bowl. Strainers strain pasta, vegetables, and other large items cooked in liquid. A sandwich spreader. A short, stubby spatula used to spread sandwich fillings and condiments. An offset spatula. It's a long, narrow tool that has a flat metal blade at the end, often used to frost cakes or even out layer of batter. A straight spatula. 
a flexible round tip tool used for icing cakes, spreading fillings and glazes, leveling dry ingredients when measuring, and even turning small pancakes and other items. A food mill is a machine that comes with several detachable parts, such as coarse, medium, and fine grating screens, used to puree food to different consistencies. A ricer is used to create rice-like pieces of cooked food by pressing the food through a sheet of small holes, known as a pierced hopper that are typically about the diameter of a piece of rice. A tammy is a drum sieve, a screen that stretches across a metal or wood base and is shaped like a drum. Food is forced through it. It is used to puree very soft food and to remove solids from purees. Cheesecloth is a light, fine mesh gauze for straining liquids such as stocks or custards, for bundling herbs or for thickening yogurt. A funnel is used to pour liquid from a larger to a smaller container. A sieve, also known as a sifter, has a mesh screen to sift flour and other dry ingredients and to remove any large impurities, as well as to combine and aerate the food product. A wire whip or whisk. Wire whips are different sizes and heaviness to use to mix, beat, and stir food. A rubber spatula, often called a scraper, a spatula with a long handle used to fold ingredients together and scrape the sides of bowls. A skimmer has a large, round, flat head with holes, used to remove foam from stock or soup to remove solid ingredients from liquids. Mesh skimmers are also available. A cook's fork or a kitchen fork a fork with two long tines to lift items to the plate and steady any item being cut. Do not use a cook's fork to turn meat that is being dry cooked because it, the tines may pierce the meat and release the juice. Tongs, scissor-like utensil that food handlers use to pick up and handle all kinds of solid food. To keep food safe, food handlers should never use the hands to pick up food. Spoons. Cooking spoons for quantity cooking are solid, perforated, or slotted. They are made of stainless steel and hold about 3 ounces. Solid spoons are serving spoons without holes in them. Use them to spoon out both liquid and solid ingredients. Perforated and slotted spoons have holes to allow liquid to drain while holding the food items on the spoon. A pie server. A specially shaped spatula made for lifting out a serving or a piece of pie. It is also known as a wedge spatula. Measuring utensils, available in many sizes, are most commonly thought of in terms of measuring an amount of an ingredient, either liquid or dry, when cooking. They can be made of plastic, metal, wood, or other materials. However, other measuring tools are used in restaurant and food service operations as well. They may measure weight or temperature. A balance scale or a baker scale weighs dry ingredients in a bake shop. A digital or electric scale is a precise scale used to measure weight. It provides a digital readout in both U.S. and metric systems. A portion scale is used to measure recipe ingredients from one quarter ounce to one pound to two pounds. Bimetallic stem thermometer used to check the temperature of large or thick food. These thermometers are inserted into the food up to a dimple on the probe and held for at least 15 seconds to check the temperature. A thermocoupler is a thermometer that measures temperature in a thick or thin food almost instantly as the temperature is read in the tip of the probe. Do not leave this kind of thermometer in food as it cooks. A ladle available in various sizes and measured in fluid ounces and milliliters so they can be used to portion out liquids. A portion scoop or disher is a short handled measuring utensil used to scoop out soft foods such as ice cream, butter, and sour cream. Portion scoops come in various sizes. Measuring cups measures varying quantities of both dry goods and liquids. Measuring cups with spouts are useful for measuring and pouring liquids. Measuring cups usually come in one quarter cup, one third cup, one half cup, and one cup sizes. A measuring spoon is used to measure small quantities of spices or liquids. The spoons measure in the amounts of eighth of a teaspoon, 
and not all sets include the smallest size quarter teaspoon half teaspoon one teaspoon and one tablespoon volume measures similar to liquid measure cups but bigger usually available in sizes of one pint one quart half gallon and one gallon pots and pans essential tools in a professional kitchen are often called cookware they are available in many shapes and sizes and are made of a variety of materials such as copper, cast iron, chrome, stainless steel, and aluminum with or without non-stick coating. In general, pots are larger vessels with straight sides and two looped handles. Pans, on the other hand, tend to be shallower and with one long handle and either straight or sloped sides. Pots are available in a range of sizes based on volume. Use them on the stovetop for making stocks, soups, or for boiling or simmering food. A brazier, also called a rondeau, this medium to large pot, more shallow than sauce pots, has straight sides and two handles for lifting. This is typically made of heavyweight material which a th with a thick bottom for good heat distribution. Use it to braise meat and vegetables. A double boiler has an upper pot and a lower pot. The lower pot holds boiling or simmering water that gently cooks the food in the upper pot. Use it for melting chocolate or heating milk and cream or butter. A sauce pot used to prepare sauces, soups, and other liquids. Sauce pots are more shallow than stock pots with straight sides and two loop handles for lifting. A stock pot, a large pot for preparing stocks. Stock pots with spigots allow the liquid to be poured out easily without losing any of the solid ingredients. Pans. A cake pan. It's a pan with straight sides and available in a variety of sizes, shapes, including round, rectangular, square, and specialty such as a heart shape. A springform pan. A two-part spring-loaded baking pan. The bottom piece in the ring secure with a spring to hold the bottom in place. Once an item is baked, the chef can release the spring to make it easy to remove the cake from the pan. A muffin tin, a metal tray with small round cups or molds used to make muffins, cupcakes, and other small baked goods. A hotel pan, used to hold prepared food in a steam table, hot holding cabinet, or refrigerator. This can sometimes be used for baking, roasting, or poaching. But because of its thin, it generally does not do well with proteins and vegetables. Hotel pans come in various sizes with different lengths and depths. A roasting pan is a shallow rectangular pan with medium high sides and two handles used to roast and bake foods such as meat and poultry. A sheet pan is a very shallow pan about one inch deep used for just about anything from baking cookies to roasting vegetables. Sheet pans come in a variety of lengths such as half quarter sheet pans. A cast iron skillet, a heavy thick pan made of cast iron used to pan grill or pan fry food like meat or vegetables. A saute pan, the, orig the original French saute pan is sloped sides and made of thin metal for quick heating. It is used strictly to saute items. A saucepan. A pan with medium height, straight sides, and a single long handle used for general cooking, in particular liquid or liquid-based mixtures on ranges. A sautoir is a classic sautoir shaped as a wide bottom and straight sides. Some typical tasks include pan frying, stir frying, and shallow poaching. A fish poacher is a long, narrow metal pan with a perforated rack used to raise or lower the fish into the cooking liquid so it does not break apart. A crepe pan, a shallow skillet with very short, slightly soaped sides, used to create crepes and thin pancakes. A wok is the metal pan with rounded bottom and curved sides. The curved sides make it easy to toss or stir food. Cooks use woks, especially for frying and steaming in Asian cooking. Pots and pans are available in a variety of materials each with specific instructions for care and cleaning. Always follow proper cleaning and sanitizing rules. Most often in a three compartment sink. Make sure that whatever technique you use is approved for food safety.
by your local regulatory authority. To avoid warping, always wait for pots and pans to cool before washing and rinsing. Typically, aluminum will be hand washed in soapy water with non-abrasive cleaner to remove stains. Chrome, wash in warm water, soap, or detergent. Do not use an abrasive cleaner. Copper, use commercial cleaners. Remove discoloration before washing. Cast iron, wash in warm, sudsy water with a mild detergent. Reapply a thin layer of fat or oil and air dry to prevent rust and pitting. Some people feel that cleaning and sanitizing cast iron can remove or damage the seasoning on the pan. Therefore, they opt for cleaning techniques such as scrubbing with coarse salt and a paper towel or a clean cloth. Stainless steel. Wash in hot, soapy water. Rinse thoroughly and air dry. Non-stick coatings. Use plastic mesh scrubber. Avoid scratches. Remove all residue from the bottom of the pan. Food may burn. Knives. Knives are the most widely used pieces of pit kitchen equipment. Food handlers use knives in most cooking preparations. From slicing to chopping to shredding, each knife is designed for a specific purpose, such as paring a vegetable or cutting meat from the bone. A good knife is made of stainless steel because it's very durable and stays sharp for a long time. A knife has two main parts, the blade and the handle. The blade is the cutting surface of the knife. The blade is made of metal and is either forged or stamped. The forged blade is made from a single piece of heated metal that is dropped into a mold and then struck with a hammer and pounded into correct shape. A stamped blade is made by cutting blade shaped pieces from sheets of milled steel. Here is a diagram of a French chef's knife. The tip. Cooks use the tip for detail work such as paring, trimming, and peeling. The cutting edge. The cutting edge is located along the bottom of the blade between the tip and the heel. Use it for slicing, carving, and making precision cuts. The cutting edge, edge can be a flat ground or tapered. Both sides of the blade taper smoothly to a narrow V. A serrated shaped into a row of teeth can be set very closely or widely apart. A hollow ground of the sides of the blade near the edge are ground away to form a hollow, making a blade extremely sharp. Granton ovals are, are ground into the sides of the blade, which helps food to release easily. And the single side, the edge is sharpened just on one side. The spine of the knife is the top of the blade and is the non-cutting edge of the blade. The heel is the widest and thickest part of the blade. Use the heel to cut through large, tough, or hard foods. Bolster. The bolster is located at the heel of the blade. It is where the blade meets the handle. The tang. The tang is the metal that continues from the blade through the handle. A full tang is as long as the whole knife handle. Chef's knives and cleavers have full tangs. Some knives have partial tangs and are used for lighter work, such as paring or bread knives. Scales. The scales are the part of the knife that make up the handle. The rivets hold the handle to the tang. The handle is made of various materials including hardwoods or textured metal. And the butt, the butt is the end of the handle. The chef's knife or French knife. This is an all-purpose knife for chopping, slicing, and mincing all types of food. Its blade is normally 8 to 14 inches long and tapers to a point at the tip. The cleaver, this heavy rectangular knife is used to chop all kinds of food from vegetables to meat, it is also used to cut through bones. A Santuco is a general purpose kitchen knife with 5 to 7 inch blade with granton indented notches on the side and help food to release easily. The Santuco knife is designed for a comfortable, well balanced grip while allowing for full blade use. A boning knife. Food handlers and cooks in the butchering area use the 6 inch knife to separate raw meat from the bone. They come in two types. One has a thin flexible blade 
that is shorter than the, the blade of a chef's knife. The other has a thicker, less flexible blade used for cutting larger pieces of protein. A slicer. This knife is used for slicing cooked meat. Its blade can be as long as 14 inches. A serrated slicer. This knife is, has a long, thin, serrated blade and is used to slice breads and cakes. The paring knife is used to trim and pare vegetables and fruits. It's a small knife with a sharp blade, only two or four inches long. A tournée is similar to a paring knife. This knife has a curved blade for cutting curved surfaces and vegetables. It is sometimes called a bird's beak for its shape. A steak knife. This curved knife is used for cutting beef steaks from loin. Clam knife. This short blunt point knife is used to shuck or open clams. Unlike the oyster knife, it has a very sharp edge. An oyster knife is a short, stubby knife with a pointed tip for shucking oysters. Knife care. Honing is the regular maintenance required to keep knives in the best shape. Chefs keep their knives sharp by using a steel and a sharpening stone. A steel is a long metal rod that is lightly grooved or magnetized. It removes the microscopic burrs that are created as the knife is used. These burrs create drag, dulling the slicing and ability of the knife. The steel also helps to return the blade to the convex shape that exists in a sharp blade. This shape is flattened as the knife is used. The steel should be used daily and before each cut to ensure that the blade is at its best. Make sure to wipe your knife off after using a steel to remove any microparticles of metal. Types of a steel. Ceramic steel, a slender ceramic rod embedded in a handle. It is used both on ceramic and metal knives to hone sharpened knives. Diamond steel, a slender metal rod or sometimes flattened rod that is impregnated with diamond dust. It should not be used to hone ceramic knives because the diamond material it can produce an extremely sharp edge as does ceramic steel. Honing steel, shaped like a short sword with a round blade, it helps to remove broken pieces and realign the remaining ground edges. A sharpening stone is used to grind and hone the edges of steel tools and implements. Sharpening removes metal from the blades, so it is only done when a knife is so dull it cannot be brought back to a sharp edge with a steel. The knife blade is held at a 20 degree angle to the sharpening stone. The blade is then passed across the oiled or watered stone an equal number of times on each side until the desired sharpness is achieved. Often sharpening stone units hold three stones. These range from coarse to very fine and allow the blade to be smooth as the process is finished. To properly care for and use knives, follow these guidelines. Keep knives sharpened. A sharp blade cuts more evenly with less force than a dull blade, so it's safer. Use a knife only for its intended purpose. Keep the handle of the knife clean and dry. Never leave knives soaking in water. Clean the knife immediately and return it to its proper storage place. Never talk or point with a knife. Never distract others who are using knives. If a knife is dropped, jump back and allow it to fall. Do not try to catch it. Store knives in knife kits, racks, or sheaths. Never hand someone a knife. Put the knife on the counter and let the other person pick it up. When you start working with knives, you will find yourself cleaning and cutting raw foods. This is one of the first steps of mise en place. Fresh vegetables, fruit, and meat often require trimming and cutting. To use most knives, Hold the food on the cutting board with one hand, your guide hand, and hold the knife by its handle with the other hand. There are two basic knife grips, the handle grip and the blade grip. In every grip, the hand that is not holding the knife is called the guiding hand and prevents slippage and helps control the size of the cut. The claw grip is the most acceptable. Bend the fingers of the guiding hand inward toward the palm and hold the thumb well back. One finger should be the furthest forward with the other fingers and thumb behind that finger. This allows a clear view while cutting. When using a knife, move the knife in a smooth downward and forward slicing motion. With practice, 
A cook is able to cut food in many different ways and increase knife speed and become more accurate with their cuts. There are 11 classical knife cuts that all students should understand and be able to demonstrate. You will have to be patient because this takes a lot of practice. You can practice these classical cuts using root vegetables such as turnips, rutabagas, carrots, and onions. Make sure that you take your time and use proper knife skill techniques. Your cutting board should be flat, secure to your table. A wart board will cause the product to be uneven when cutting. Also, make sure that on each cut, your knife blade is perpendicular to the cutting board, forming a 90 degree angle. Tilting the blade either way, even by a few degrees, will cause your cut to be off and your product to be misshapen. A large dice is a 3 quarter inch by 3 quarter inch by 3 quarter inch cube. A medium dice is a half inch by half inch by half inch cubed. Small dice is a one quarter inch by one quarter inch by one quarter inch cube. A brunoise is an eighth of an inch by eighth of an inch by eighth of an inch cube. A batonet is a one quarter inch by one quarter inch by two inches long stick. A julienne is an eighth of an inch by eighth of an inch by two inches stick. A rondelle is a quarter inch thick slice, typically cut from a carrot or some type of round vegetable. A diagonal or a bias cut is a quarter inch thick oval slice. A paisan is a half inch by half inch by eighth of an inch thick. A chiffonade, leafy vegetable stacked and rolled tight, an example would be basil, cut into long strips approximately eighth of an inch wide. A tournée, one of the most difficult cuts, is football shaped, three quarter inch in diameter, two inches long, with seven equal sides and flat ended. 